The second step of molding is constructing the parting board and resting the plug at the center line. The purpose of this step is to mount the plug in such a way as to expose it at exactly the center line, dividing the plug exactly in half. First, the box is constructed. Three boards are nailed together to build the base of the box. The box must be taller than half of the plug, as you will see when the parting board is mounted. To make the parting board, Dennis traces the outline of the cowl on a piece of masonite. He then cuts out the shape. A good cut makes it easier to mount the plug, but slightly too large is better than slightly too small because it is possible to fill in the gaps between the plug and the board with clay. Next, Dennis waxes the plug and the board four times. He uses the number 11 mold release wax, which is a carnauba wax specially designed for mold release applications. Each coat is allowed to haze, is buffed off, and then is left alone for one hour before applying the next coat. After all four coats of wax have been applied, the plug is ready to be mounted in the parting board. Dennis draws the center line on the plug with a magic marker. This way he can visually verify that the plug is resting properly. Additionally, he has built braces for the plug so that it rests at exactly the center line. Now, exactly half of the plug is exposed, which is necessary for construction of the mold. Next, the gaps around the plug need to be filled in. Dennis uses the number 104 clean clay, a non-drying, oil-based clay, which allows for future application of wax and PVA. Compatibility of all molding clays and mold release agents is very important. Now once I get the clay all pushed down into the gap, I take the stick and I push firmly down and flush to the parting board and wipe up all the excess. And as you can see, it comes off and makes a nice clean corner from the parting board to the plug, which is actually going to be our mold edge. And now the mold, or the plug, is completely clayed and the crack and the gap are completely sealed with a nice clean corner and the mold is ready to be waxed again. The entire surface is then waxed a final time including the clay and the board. It is necessary to wax over the clay before applying the PVA. Be careful not to change the position of the plug and the parting board. Because this is the last coat, it is not necessary to wait an hour after buffing the wax to continue. You must only wait until it hazes, buff it off, and then proceed. Dennis is ready to apply the number 13 PVA. PVA and wax systems are designed to be used together and are not interchangeable with other systems. The PVA is best applied by spraying. Dennis uses a pre-ball sprayer, which allows a fine mist to be sprayed. PVA is applied as three light mist layers, allowing about 10 minutes between coats to dry. Excess PVA can cause problems in the surface coat, so it is important to apply the PVA as a light mist. After the third layer of PVA has dried, it is necessary to wait two to three hours before proceeding. After this time, the process of constructing the mold can begin. Do not proceed if the PVA has not dried.